Thanks for staying with us here on Join News Prime. I want to begin with a story uh, developing we are following for you, going concern about the customary marriage between uh, the Bobu Wulomo and a 12-year-old. Um, we want to speak with uh, Brian Apia, who is Executive Director of Childwise International. Before then, we want to uh, bring to you a clip of the uh, Nungwa chief uh, justifying uh, this marriage, apparently. <laughs> So, uh, the Nungwa chief there uh, justifying the customary marriage between uh, the Bobu Ulomo, who is 63 years old, and a 12 year old. Um, just to sum up what he's been saying there in God, that it is tradition. And he makes uh, the assertion that, I mean, girls at 12 are not even virgins anymore. Uh, Bright Apia is executive director of Childwise International. He joins us on phone uh, with a reaction to this. Uh, first of all, what are you hearing about this story, Bright? Well, uh, we, got, we got into a bit of information uh, yesterday. And uh, we have to also do our investigation. And clearly, there is uh, uh, some conflicting uh, outcomes, especially measures against uh, the right of the child, what custom ought to be. So, in the minds of the, the people doing that, they feel that they are feeling a customary right. And for that matter, uh, they have to uphold their tradition, which, of course, we agree with them. And we also look at the picture of, of the child in, your, in all the um, uh, discussion. We also came to the conclusion that, yes, if, if it is good for people to fulfill their tradition, they must also measure that against uh, the right of a child, especially where the law prohibits the engagement of a child above the age of 18 years. So the issues of choice, uh, children should not even come in at all fulfilling that traditional uh, um, culture that they deal with and they hold dear to their heart. So for, for us, we think that offense has been committed and we expect 
uh, our our laws to work and we expect the institutions to take up this matter to save the child uh, because in this in the fulfillment of this culture uh, we don't think that children do have a place in the whole discussion as to whether a child is a virgin or not it's not a question uh, to just answer on the basis of that you don't want to take that decision but what the law requires is that a child below the age of 18 cannot get married to anybody irrespective of whether they are fulfilling tradition or uh, whatever it is that they need to do. So the understanding that must be established is that in fulfilling this particular tradition, uh, children below the age of 18 are not available for the fulfillment mm. of this. So if that has happened, and if to the extent that it, it, it is a child uh, who is uh, the age is around 12, uh, which for us, we think that uh, it doesn't sit well within our laws, it doesn't sit well with the protection of our children, it doesn't sit well in, the, in protecting the dignity of our children. So we, we, we have to take action to make sure that uh, some of these things do not happen. And in this particular case, we expect the institution to take up the matter and deal with it as the law prescribes. Yeah, there's absolutely no justification for this, and uh, we anticipate that the powers that be would uh, take up the matter. But uh, for Childwise International, is there anything you're going to do to ensure that the right things are done? Oh, well, certainly. Once it, it involves a child, and we feel that the right of the child has been violated, irrespective of uh, whether the parent agrees or is a fulfillment of a tradition. I think that uh, we need to protect the right of the child first. And whatever we need to do uh, to make sure that we protect the right of the child, uh, we will do it. Uh, as, I, as I said, we are still investigating uh, the, the matter. And at the appropriate time, we will come out. And whatever it is that we need to do in respect to this particular case, we'll take that action. All right, thank you so much, uh, Brian. Up here, Executive uh, Director of Child Rights Inter International, reacting to. Uh, uh, this news unfolding about the customary marriage between uh, Bobo Ulomo, who is a 63-year-old and a 12-year-old. Um, we, we had the Nungwa chief uh, justify uh, the marriage, saying it's tradition, and um, also said that, um, I mean, girls her age are not virgins anymore. Uh, Child Rights International uh, responding to that, saying they are going to investigate this on, uh, on their own, and also um, asking the powers that be to uh, take up the matter. Joining me also is Minister for Chieftaincy and Religious Affairs, Stephen Asama uh, Good evening, good evening to you. Thanks for joining us on Joy News Prime. Um, what do you make of this uh, news that is unfolding? What do you know about it so far? Thank, thank you very much, Carlos. Um, I um, <laughs> I'm, I'm really not sure what you say now because I'm getting different reports. Um, I got the initial information this. Early this afternoon, that a ceremony took place in Nungua uh, involving the Ulomo uh, and a young lady of 12 years old. Um, my initial report suggested that it was one of those uh, ritual things that the family, and I hear the, the girls' parents are part of the same family. Um, but I'm still doing a lot more checks <clears throat> um, through the uh, traditional authorities and the uh, the police command on the ground, um, because we are talking about a minor here, and also trying to reach the family of the of the 12 year old girl. Um, uh, it's not clear what actually is happening there, and I want to get to the bottom of it. Uh, my information is that a letter was sent from the Ulomos office to the police that a ceremony was uh, to taking place. The letter went I think on Friday, which is Good Friday. Um, so it's, it's a public notification given, so it doesn't look like any secret thing. Um, but I want to get to the bottom of it. You know, the chief tenancy institution is, is a bit complex. The Wulomos are not really within the law in which I operate part of it. Uh, and I'm, I'm trying to do or suggest amendments uh, that gets all of them involved. The Wulomos, the, uh, the Asafwa chairs, the Ebushan Pinyis, and because they're all part of the tradition of the of the country and, and our culture and our system. Um, but in the meantime, they are it's an outside it. So I have to do a little bit more work to find out this. But but I'm concerned that there's a twelve year old involved. I'm concerned 
Um, I want to know where about the girl right outside the speech, where is she? I want to know her location. Is she with the parents or is she in the Willowmost house? Where is she? So um, um, my ears are on the ground as I speak to you now. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Minister for Chieftaincy and Religious Affairs. Uh, Stephen Asoma Boatin, I appreciate that you could join us uh, with uh, your thoughts uh, on this matter as well. You're watching uh, Join News Prime. My name is Daryl Kao. Um, we are just following this uh, bizarre story, um, if you like, of a uh, 12-year-old who's uh, apparently uh, married, been given in, married to a 63-year-old Bobo Ulamo. Um, we've just heard from the Chief Tennessee Minister who is expressing concern about this as well. Um, he says uh, they are going to look into his child rights international, responding to it, reacting to it as well, saying uh, they are going to investigate on their own. But this, um, as we heard from Bright Apia, is um, against the laws of the country and shouldn't uh, be accepted. Uh, Ni Adute Otinto II is Paramount Chief of the Simple Traditional Area in Accra. Uh, he joins us on phone. He's also the Mankwal of the Ga State. Uh, sir, thank you for joining us on Join News Prime. Uh, first of all, um, have you been following this story? What do you make of it? If I get no need to know in my social media, I care for Bublom. I care a 12 years old girl, Afi Kusunku. She mean care, man be a gadang with these well, traditional authorities. I love my chair, man. Well, fair, including the president, the chair, where I come last, in the 1992 constitution. Well, if I need Mokoba come la, a widi, never say no. Ne e kemla be e ya. No ni ya no e jig muji ke ha gadangbe fen. Ni mi chop man no ni mi ke gadangbe. Bi fen ake. This is the time na sane ame you fe ametishin. E da ke ni bi kume ni ya no. Wa maja che me kume. Ke wa wwa mwe kume. Amen dra gadangbe. Ni ke ate shi. E ke fande baba. Any man saw a you fadi, a bad man, no fadi. Well, me chop man and me can gadang the youth be fair. Come at this. The Kamatana and the Anone can walk washer, muji, niba, but gadang the beer here. Ebahin. I am a tono quacker and be an amethyst school. I'm a lewolomi. The French are called lewolomi and the cast no yale. The Kamatha school, I'm a lewolomi. I make kind of nineteen ninety two constitution. What say why I'm lashy? That's a look of call like a wordy. Near this time, now some of my daughter may what protect the youth fair. Like a youth fair, my dear future. Nika or Quadibini, I know. You want or call, I say, dear, but not talk about Gadang the youth fair, I'm a better future. The world in the Bonica program and come out talk about me. And I mean, yeah, you can be hard. If you have my mood, I can not need to know me condemn a bad man. I can't hate a woman. Now, if I'm not a woman, I'm not a woman. I'm a bagadang in London. I can take the issue lightly. I'm not a woman. I can take the issue lightly. I'm not a woman. I'm not a woman. I'm not a woman. I'm not a all right, uh, thank you so much. Ni Adote Otinto, the second paramount chief of the Sempe traditional area, also Mankala of the Ga uh, state, uh, speaking with us in Ga. I'm just going to try a translation of what he said. Um, in summary, condemning um, the act by the Bobu Wulomo. Uh, to have the 12-year-old as his wife, also saying that it must not be encouraged. He's asking the president to take it up, uh, the law enforcement agencies to also take it up. He says that uh, they are not taking this matter lightly. They are going to pursue it. And um, it's profound. This is coming from him. Uh, we are going to continue to follow this story for you here on Join News. Uh, do stay with us. Um, if we have any more updates, we'll bring you up to speed.
Turning to other news, you're fooling for you. The intermittent power cuts have destroyed several medical equipment at the Confanochi Teaching Hospital, including the UPS system of the hospital. Strong news sources indicate the outages um, have contributed to the breakdown of heavily dependent hospital machines. And Abwachi Adam has been following the situation at the Confanochi Teaching Hospital and the Minsha Government Hospital in Kumasi. Uh, he joins me on phone uh, to tell us a bit more. Uh, Nana, first of all, tell us about the areas that were affected by the power outages. Well, Daryl, yesterday the intermittent power cuts affected major parts of the Ashanti region, um, including the Asokori Mampon area, Bantama, Edum, um, Kaspe, Sofolai, and its environs, um, which led to the outages um, leading to cuts at. at um, the Confanoche Teaching Hospital and the Menshia Government Hospital. So these major places are among the areas that got affected severely by the intermittent power cut yesterday. And uh, what have you been able to gather? I know that you have been uh, scouting for information from uh, the uh, Confanoche Teaching Hospital as well as the Menshia Hospital. What did you gather? Well, our text from the Confanoche Teaching Hospital indicates that heavy um, life saving equipment at the hospital has been affected by the intermittent power cuts, including the uh, UPS system. Um, voltage could rise, which could be at 300, drops to 156, which is um, very, very low and makes it very difficult for the hospital to continue its operation. We're being told that major equipment, major life saving equipment at the Confanochi Teaching Hospital um, are not functioning due to the intermittent power cuts. For the Menshia Government Hospital, the power cut or the power outages um, yesterday and today and um, really did hit the hospital. Management had to depend on a standby generator um, to make sure that they could continue their work. But then um, they've been hit severely by the intermittent power cuts, especially the Covernote Teaching Hospital, which is, which is losing two UPS systems, reliable UPS systems, which could actually provide power to them anytime there is an outage. But as we speak, the UPS system is not working alongside some equipment um, that are really dependent upon the hospital. Any patients affected? Well, uh, for now, management hasn't disclosed um, if a patient has been affected or not, but um, we're being told that an investigation is being carried out. Um, so as, as to whether or not a patient is affected or not, management will clearly come out with that. Uh, but what have they got to say, the management, I mean, about the, the past situation? Well, the situation has really left them worried, especially for the Confanoche Teaching Hospital management of the Confanoche Teaching Hospital, because um, their UPS system is what they could rely on any time there is an um, there is an um, an intermittent power cut. But then, for the UPS system not working, they they are finding ways and means to keep um, an eye on their patients, especially those who would rely on equipment that needs or that depends on power. And so, for them, they are really really worried, and they are calling on the ECG restore power to them uh, to make sure that before there is an outage, there is a prior notice given to management of the hospital. Hello, Bashi Adam. Thank you so much for that update. Uh, turning to the Bono East region where health authorities in the Tichiman municipality are expressing worry over the increasing number of mental health cases recorded across the area. The situation, according to the municipal mental health officer, NS Asamwa, is as a result of the rise in the incidence of depression, which leads to suicide in some cases. Mr. Samuel, who was speaking at the 2023 annual health review meeting of the municipality, noted that authorities are embarking on uh, rigorous mental health education to help address the menace. And as a bit has more. Addressing stakeholders and participants during the 2023 annual performance review meeting of the Tichman Municipal Health Directorate, Municipal Disease Control Officer Abraham Noom, who spoke on behalf of the Municipal Health Director, revealed that the directorate in the year under review saw an improvement with regards to its performance with the directorate recording 3.6, an improvement of the 2022 figure of 3.2. With regards to overall performance, uh, this year is better. Overall, last year we had a performance of 3.4, but as indicated, as you saw, the overall performance came to 3.6 this year. So we are able to you know, catch up with some of our indicators that we couldn't get last year. He was however quick to note that the directorate is committed to improving the health outcomes of residents in the area 
as it continues its steps towards liaising with the necessary stakeholders in the sector to improve quality health care. We already saw that uh, we brought some kind of agenda that will help us to achieve the targets. And so that is exactly what we are going to do. As we go, we are not sleeping. We are going to build on the, the shortfalls. What we think will be, be necessary or will help us to achieve our targets next year, we will put them together. And the necessary logistics and interventions that are needed, we will put in place. Municipal Mental Health Officer Ernest Asamoah expressed worry at the increase in mental health cases across the municipality, adding that the incidence of depression is on the rise. When we, we look at uh, our municipality here, what is prevailing is the incidence of depression. Depression emanating from um, psychosocial concerns. There are a lot of psychosocial concerns. We also uh, notice that um, the economic situation of people living in this uh, municipality also has some sort of impact on them. He stated that the directorate is, however, increasing its educational mental health issues to help address this menace. At the municipal health directorate level, the only thing we can do for now is to intensify health education, to make people aware of the signs and symptoms of depression or suicide. Definitely, depression leads to suicide most times or attempted suicide. So it's health education. We are intensifying health education for people to know much about mental health conditions. That is what we are doing for now. Several departments and individuals were awarded for their relentless contributions to healthcare in the area. Juliet Mensa, a community health nurse at the Bamri Chips compound, is one of them. She says the recognition would go a long way to help improve her output as well as the general health care of the area. It means a lot. This award means a lot. At least it has made me feel like my work has been appreciated in the municipal. Yes, because if you work and there is no recognition, at times it makes your spirit go down. But at least when an award is given, it makes you feel like you didn't work in vain and your bosses have really appreciated what you have done. Anna Sabit, Joy News, Teacherman. All right, and that's uh, John News Prime. Thanks for watching, everyone. We continue to follow uh, the story we brought you about the customer marriage between the Bobo Ulomo and a 12-year-old. We've got reactions from uh, various quarters coming in uh, to this story. My name is Daryl Kwa. More news on our website, myjoyonline.com. Stay with us here on John News.